Hi everyone, welcome to uh, Facebook Live once again with Mayor Southers. I'm Jennifer Schrader with our City Communications Department. We're really glad that you're tuning in and joining us today. Mayor, thanks for being with us. Jen, I'm glad to be with you. you got a busy schedule and a lot going on. Today is kind of a fun day to do a Facebook Live because it's Colorado Day. We're celebrating uh, the birth of our state and then also yesterday was Colorado Springs birthday. The 147th birthday of Colorado Springs, July 1st. Uh, the first stake was driven at Cascade and Pikes Peak on July 31st, 1871. Wow. So when we're talking about that rich history, can you kind of go over that a little bit with us and, and you know, leading that into the future? Well, well I think what, what's important to impress upon people is, uh, you know, what we see as our history today need not have turned out as it did. Um, when William Palmer founded the city of Colorado Springs, he was taking a big chance. He didn't know it would wind up being one of the great uh, big cities in America. Uh, think about it, there's 73 incorporated cities in uh, Colorado today. There's 1,500 ghost towns. So the vast majority of towns that were founded in around that time never made it. Mm -hmm. And here's a guy who in the middle of the plains, you know, drove this stake, but he also brought you know, 27 million, the equivalent of 27 million of his own money. Uh, there were no trees. He's responsible for all the trees, and 10,000 trees in Colorado Springs. Uh, he's the guy who, uh, you know, invested in parks, donated land for parks, bought land for parks. Uh, he's the guy that uh, helped found Colorado College and other early institutions. Um, so I think we have to, you know, this wasn't all a given. There's a lot of sweat and blood of our uh, predecessors that went into creating the, the beautiful city that we enjoy today. An amazing foresight. Um, such a great leader. So uh, talking about his vision, as we build on the history, what is your vision for the future of Colorado Springs? Well, well, something that I say all the time when I think about General Palmer is uh, our challenge, you know, 147 years, 475,000 people later, is not really substantially different than General Palmer's. He wanted to build a city that complemented the majestic scenery around it. And uh, that's our, still our task. We need to continue to build a city that matches our unbelievable scenery. And that's what we're doing. What does that mean? That means uh, infrastructure. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, we plan accordingly. Uh, that uh, we, uh, you know, uh, deal with the growth that we have. Uh, we got to make sure that our roads are maintained, uh, that our uh, public facilities, stormwater, you know, as we in, uh, develop lots of impervious surface, we got to make sure that we properly deal with that uh, to make sure that we're not causing problems for our residents and residents of other uh, communities. Uh, Infrastructure is one of them. I also think. Uh, we need to make sure we have the type of economy that survives. Why are those other towns ghost towns? Because they were solely reliant on mining. mining right. They were solely reliant on railroads. They were solely reliant on something else, a particular crop. Uh, today we have a very diverse economy. We have defense. The good news is probably not going away. Sometimes we have fluctuations in budget, but that's a very reliable uh, economic driver. We've got high tech. High tech evolves. You know, we used to be Silicon Mountain. Now we're a cybersecurity hub, things like that. But we got to stay on top of that. Tourism. Uh, Tourism is a huge part of our economy. Uh, once again, as long as the uh, when economic times are good, that's also very reliable. Uh, and then the the fourth component that I'm pretty excited about uh, is sports. You know, it's now a half a billion dollar industry in Colorado Springs, I don't think that's going away. You know, people are always going to be involved in sports. The Olympics have survived, uh, you know, thousands of years when you consider the ancient Olympiad and even the modern Olympiad uh, uh, since 1900, uh, they're still gonna be around. Mm -hmm. And so I feel very, very good about that diversi diversification, but you gotta make sure you work at that too. There's, yes, there's a lot of momentum. And speaking of that momentum, let's talk about the Colorado Sports and Events Center, which was announced last week. Can you kind of provide some details about location, uh, the two locations and the partners involved? You bet. Um, the stadium and downtown sports arena was one component of the four 
that are involved in, in City for Champions. Colorado Springs went to the State Regional Tourism Authority, the Economic Development Commission, and said, we want to build these four projects that will attract tourists. The U.S. Olympic Museum, uh, move the uh, Air Force Academy Visitor Center to the highway, uh, I-25, build a sports medicine facility at UCCS, and we'd like to build a downtown uh, stadium and event center. Uh, the other three have made pretty good progress. The problem with the downtown sports and event center is when we costed it out, it was about $60 million, mm -hmm. about $20 million for a stadium, about uh, 35 to $40 million for an indoor arena. Uh, the problem was with the the allocation from the state was like 27.9 million, which only uh, uh, present valued about 15 million. So that's 15 out of 60 million. Even when we took into account revenue streams from ticket sales, we figured we were about 25 to 30 million dollars short. So we needed private investment. Mm -hmm. And we went out and talked to a lot of people, and lo and behold, we were able to find that private investment. I'm very excited about it. As to the, the downtown stadium, it's going to be built at CityGate, which is a vacant area, uh, and some also some warehouses behind it, uh, which is just as you come over the Cimarron Bridge into Colorado uh, Springs uh, from I-25. And uh, there'll be a, a total of about six acres. Uh, the Colorado Springs switchbacks, in partnership with Widener Apartments, are going to build the stadium, $20 million. They're going to have a commercial uh, residential development around it, about $40 million. And uh, that's terrific, uh, that kind of uh, private investment. Uh, they will be able to take advantage of the fact that that's currently in an urban rural zone, so they get the same advantage of anybody that built a motel or a restaurant or anything like that. And then uh, Colorado College uh, stepped forward. They have for a long time felt that they needed an arena on campus to be more competitive in Division I hockey. Uh, their recruits want, you know, a, a campus arena that you get the atmosphere with lots of students there and things like that. So uh, we talked to them uh, and said, you know, you're going to build this arena. We can provide you a third of that uh, funding that's available through the state if you uh, we'll enter into intergovernmental agreements or memorandums of agreement, I should say, with the various uh, Olympic sports governing bodies so that we can have taekwondo events there, wrestling events mm -hmm. there, all kinds of events that will track out-of-state tourists. And uh, they did so. And so that's, you know, $39 million of investment of which uh, CC's coming up with $34 million of it. So. It's really impressive to have almost $100 million of investment, and uh, the taxpayers of Cower Springs aren't on the hook for any of it. Mm -hmm. That's great, and we, show, we showed some graphics to kind of break that down for folks as well. Um, and if you don't mind, we have received some questions about the stadium and the indoor arena, um, and one of them is just about parking. Sure. Can you address that? Well, yeah. Uh, the, we'll have a 10000 uh, seat, seat arena uh, at CityGate. I'm sorry, uh, a stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 8,000 parking uh, spots within uh, three quarters of a mile. I also think, by the way, with the construction of the um, museum down there, I think you'll see more parking, including potentially a city parking garage in the next a year, year and a half, or and so. that's very close. Yeah, that's to that very. Yeah, that's site. like that's a, like two blocks away. Mm -hmm. And I just have a feeling that as uh, those warehouses come down for some period of time, there'll be a lot of surface uh, parking. Uh, and then as to CC, they've done some parking studies. You got to remember that a high percentage of, of those three thousand people that will come to the games live on the CC campus or our CC faculty and have parking spaces on the CC campus. Some of them have houses within walking distance and things like that. So for the 1,000 or 1,500 people, uh, there's a lot of parking to the south in the, in the city. The, the CC plans to run shuttles from the city parking garages and things like that. Uh, so the parking studies look pretty good. Okay. And uh, I know the people are, are somewhat skeptical about that, but uh, I'm pretty confident that the 
parking situation has been pretty closely uh, evaluated. And I think when you talked about the funding, you sort of addressed the next question in terms of, you know, the private funders, but some residents are asking, why didn't we vote on this project? And will, will there be an opportunity for any kind of public input as we move forward? Well, there will be in the planning process. You didn't, didn't vote on it because we weren't asking for any new tax dollars. Uh, under Tabor, if the city's asking for, you know, any kind of increase in taxes or anything like that, uh, then it has to go to a vote. Uh, here, the state has already appropriated uh, the present value $15 million for this project. Uh, the urban rural district already exists. Uh, we're not asking the voters for any investment in this. And I, I, you know, I see letters to the editor, well, the city's going to get stuck with this. No, we won't. Uh, if this goes belly up, it's the it's Wideners and uh, and uh, uh, the switchback problem. It's not the city of Colorado Springs problem. It's no different than any other business that was mm -hmm. uh, was built there. So uh, that's why uh, it's not something that the the voters will be voting on. In terms of moving forward with some of the um, neighborhood um, changes, there will be some public. Oh, absolutely! All input. this will have to go through the planning process. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, they'll, uh, CC will have to, exam uh, for example, uh, go to the planning commission and the council for uh, uh, whatever approvals they need to, and there'll be a, a discussion of the parking study and all that sort of thing. Uh, there'll be uh, planning approvals for the stadium also. Uh, and I think some of these will come uh, start pretty quickly. I, I honestly think you may see dirt move before the end of the a year at both locations. That's exciting. It is yeah, exciting. Really yeah. exciting time. Um, and, and speaking of this promising time, you grew up here in Colorado Springs. I know some folks are aware and may not realize that. Um, but what does it mean to you personally to have witnessed the city come so far, um, as, you know, especially as we mark the birthday of Colorado Springs? Well, you know, that has a lot to do with why I ran for mayor in the first place. I'm a guy that's real fortunate and has a lot of options in life. And when I stepped out of the uh, AG's office. I certainly uh, could have gone into pretty lucrative private practice and things like that. But what, you know, the fact that I thought the city was struggling a little bit, uh, things have been a little stagnant down here, and uh, uh, I saw it as an opportunity to help the hometown that I grew up in. And I, I have a sense of satisfaction that we've really moved the ball in the last uh, three years. Uh, you know, I, when I was growing up, literally, uh, I remember South Circle uh, was a dirt road and was the extreme east of Cower Springs. Now it's in the western half of Cower right. Springs. Um, I, when I was born, there's a little over 40,000 people in Cower Springs. I like to say now there's more than 40,000 college students in Colorado Springs. But, you know, here we are, 147 years later, uh, 475,000 people later, and we're still the most desirable place in America to live. Mm -hmm. That's something I feel really good about. Yeah. And we're going to grow. We, uh, pe you, you, you know, there's, there's job opportunities here. People want to retire here, uh, things like that. We just got to make sure it, uh, we do it as smartly as possible. And, uh, you know, I want to be uh, whatever size the city is, uh, in 20 years, I hope uh, we'll still be rated the most desirable place in America to live. I hope so, too. It's so much going on that we can it, all take oh, pride in. It, there's an incredible amount going on. Right. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. We well, really I, I'm really pleased it. to do it. Going over all that's happening, and um, we appreciate you all joining us as well. We encourage you to follow us on social media to stay up to date on all the city news and events. Have a great day.